Okay, so it's preparing right now and setting it up. There we go. Okay, we'll give some viewers a chance to come on real quick before we get really into it. Okay. Hello and welcome. This is Meryl with Akron Soul Train. And tonight I'm here with resident artist Ephraim Nehemiah to explore and discuss their exhibition, Out of No Way, currently displayed in the Capsule Gallery in the Burton D. Morgan exhibition space in downtown Akron. The show will be up until October 23rd, so you only have one more week if you want to see it in person. Our gallery hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 to 4 p.m. After the gallery tour and artist talk, we will have performances with Ephraim's invited guests. Um, we welcome Khalil Cage, Quiet Kid, Andrea Doe. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Akron Soul Train is an artist residency program connecting and empowering the community and artists by granting fellowships that provide resources for all creative disciplines to foster a more vibrant Akron. Before we get going, I'd like to thank our sponsors for their continued support. The GAR Foundation, Akron Community Foundation, the Ohio Arts Council, Leonard Family Foundation, the Brennan Family Foundation, the Knight Foundation, the Char and Chuck Fowler Family Foundation, the Corbin Foundation, and a very special thank you to the Vernon L. Odom Fund for funding this residency. Anyone viewing, please feel free to comment below with questions and comments, thoughts, and uh, we'll try and get to them uh, probably after I'm done kind of walking around the exhibition. Um, also, please feel free to comment on any of Akron Soul Train's videos, um, how you like our virtual programming, so we can continue to put out the most thoughtful and creative comments, content, sorry, for you all. Okay, so Ephraim, I'm going to have you kind of introduce yourself, and I'll get set up to start going through your exhibition, Out of No Way. Yes, hello, hello, hello. I'm very grateful to be here um, and excited that I got the opportunity um, to, to have this exhibition with Akron Soul Train. I am a performing poet. Um, I'm a teacher, uh, dabbling in visual art. Um, and so right now, poetry, like I said, performance poetry is my, my main discipline. I also compete with it as well. I've had the opportunity to win some awards, um, have some poems published, as well as have uh, my first full length published. Um, with 12 Arts Press out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, but I was very grateful for this opportunity um, in which I could use my poetry background to have an installation here with Akron Soul Train. And so it is titled Out of No Way, um, as you're seeing now. And so with uh, my work, I really wanted to focus on the different experiences that we create out of poverty and the way that shapes the way we view the world um, and also the ways that we adapt to it. And so, for those who, who grew up poverty, and this impacts people differently. I mean, the pe way people respond to it is, is different culture to culture. Um, but it, like I said, it's titled out of no way because of the things that you have to, you know, have to make when you're in those situations, you know, make a way out of no way. Um, and so I thought of different, different items that I interacted with growing up and the ways that things were repurposed. And so as you see with the installation, there's five different stations here. Um, so we're going on the first one now. Um, and so each one has a poem etched into it. Some a little harder to see than others, um, but a, a poem was created for each of the items. And so this first one here is a tombstone. Um, and for those who have seen how utility poles, you know, if someone uh, passed away at a certain location, a memorial will be created there. And a lot of times this is round, um, this is round a utility pole. Um, and so you'll see like teddy bears and cards, candles and things of that nature. Um, and especially with certain areas that are impacted with poverty, um, the way that creates an environment for violence and the way that sometimes takes people's lives away. Um, and, and so creating those memorials and, and being able to recognize a person's life 
and the way that's used there. Um, and so there's a saying where right, you die once when you stop breathing and a second time when someone says your name for the last time. And so it's definitely um, in our culture important to keep people name o'clock, keep people's names alive, keep their memories alive. Um, and so this is one of the ways that happens. So I, like I said, this is something that's repurposed the utility pole, um, which I you know, cut a piece off of and those will be memorials. Um, which one, which one? All right, this, yes. Um, and so for this, right, this is um, also the ways that we have to practice in terms of faith and prayer and protection. Um, and especially if you're growing up in certain environments, you know, uh, how many parents have those fears and concerns of how they're able to protect their children. And a lot of times there's not as many physical things that you can do. And so the role that faith plays um, and just hoping that your children make it back home safely. Um, and so I grew up in a, a church background. And so two things, you know, it was anointing oil, which was, you know, oftentimes olive oil, but um i would have that you know so use the noise oil press on your forehead and say a little prayer before you go out the door and this is supposed to protect you through the day um and also just the importance of the bible which mama for real think is sacrilege and i wrote a poem on it um but these are you know things that are used as as protection and to keep you safe and so anytime there will be an incident you will hear during like a testimony service in the church of how like these were the reasons someone was able to to make it back home safely or you know make it through uh, a potential dangerous experience so yes, it's armor and protection. Okay, and we'll move on to this one. Yes. Um, and so yes, doctors are expensive. Um, hospitals are expensive. And so there's also this right, idea of how much maybe black people don't want to go to the doctor, but some of that is also fueled, you know, for those who had experiences in poverty, how much it could cost, right? And it's like it gotta feel like a real like extreme emergency. It's like there's nothing else. And so if you have these remedies that like may not be the most prescribed thing, but you just use what you can. Um, and so Rubitussin was something, and ginger ale were both used as just like these all purpose, you know what I'm saying, uh, <laughs> medicines for anything, things that don't even really apply to. Um, and so that's why it's titled health insurance, because um, these were the things that I was supposed to, you know, get sick. Um, Chris Rock also had like a, a a famous part of one of his specials, right? Where it's like all these things happen, you know, get, get the rubber tussin. Um, And so that's an experience that I had as well, where like you can have all these different sicknesses and ailments. Um, and these were the things that were often used to, to help make you feel better. Okay. Um, boom, so with this one, I don't even know how I'll be able to find these, right? This is, uh, these are fire hydrant caps. Um, and so for those also it's hot in the summertime, you know what I'm saying? You wasn't going to no water park, um, but you bust open the, the fire hydrant so someone else would do it and right, and you have the water coming out, people were playing it, cool down. Um, and so when I thought I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna find some fire hydrant caps. And I was looking online, it was just a bunch of like toy fire hydrants. Um, and, but I ended up getting on Etsy and someone was just, you know, they had some fire hydrant caps available, which I was very grateful for. Um, and so, yeah, this one is titled water park, as you can see, um, in the way that that is made where right? it's too hot outside, you need some, so you break open that fire hydrant. Um, so I was grateful to find those, actually all the items for real. I was, yeah, kind of took a little fight, so I'm like glad I found it. And this probably might be one of the most familiar things. Um, I'm assuming I really don't know what people was most familiar with. Um, but right, this milk crate used as as a basketball hoop. Um, especially sometimes someone would like, even if there was a basketball court nearby, sometimes something would be wrong with the rims, or they would take them off. Um, and you know, you would have to make your your own situation, or you wasn't buying that actual basketball hoop always to have in your backyard. So this was something that you could repurpose to use as a basketball hoop. Um, and this was a little harder too, cause the milk crate challenge happened around the same time I was ready to get it. Um, and I was like, why are there no milk crates around? <laughs> um, but then, you know, end up finding one. Uh, so yeah, and that's, you just cut the bottom out and that's, you know, so you can play basketball. Um, and so those are the, the different five different stations and all these things that, like I said, get, get repurposed um, and used amongst many, many, many other things. Um, but these were the ones that uh, I felt compelled to, to choose um, and be able to, to write poems in response to. And so, as you saw, as we zoomed in closely, the poems that were created for each of these items was etched into uh, the items themselves. And then there's also a vocal recording so that you can hear them. So if you have the opportunity to visit um, the exhibit, you can you know get your QR code scanner going on and you can hear, uh, hear the poems as well as read them. And, you know, read them on the paper as well as read them on the items themselves. 
Yeah, and I think that that was a really, it gave a lot of weight to these items to have the poems etched into them, like actually scratched into that surface. And then also being able to hear the performance, it really does add a whole nother layer that viewers can, um, can really feel and, and see and hear. Um, can you talk like maybe just briefly how you got the idea to kind of etch that, etch those uh, poems in? Yeah, um, I, I wanted the, the items to feel, you know, really, I guess, connected to my experience with them. Um, and so, and also I was thinking like, do I just put them there? I'm like, I gotta do something else. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I haven't done enough in the visual artist world to, you know, really claim it, but I, I still wanna try to think of like how I can, you know what I'm saying, different ways I could have my poetry show up. Um, and so that felt like, you know, something that I was also capable of doing, right? Like I can't paint nothing, um, but I can create the poem and, and like I said, etch it in. Uh, and at first I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna do it, but shout out to, to Google and the internet. I was like, oh, you know, these are these things that you could buy that can help you, you know, write into different, different surfaces. And they each presented a different challenge as well. Um, but I think also I did an exhibit with um, Spaces in Cleveland and uh, I was collaborating with some of the, the people there. And one of my, uh, it was like a, a wood, it was a really huge wooden scale. And later on in the process, um, someone had suggested like uh, using a wood burner to, to etch something onto that item. And so I had that in mind as well when uh, for this exhibit in terms of things that could be you know etched into the, the actual items and and so like I'd like so I wanted them to also be able to live with the poems in them the items themselves as well as only having the, the vocal recording be a part of it. Yeah and how did you um, kind of narrow down or find inspiration with these very particular items um, because on the surface they're I would say quite ordinary, but mm -hmm. having them be connected to these poems makes them hold so much weight, but also makes it very relatable to anyone really, I think is kind of can recognize the fact that we use items for maybe not their intended purpose or for um, other things that kind of change how we view them. Yeah, and, and so, I had like a long list of things that got repurposed, like you said, but I, I wanted to narrow it down with the things that called out to me the most, but also had really particular experiences attached with them. Um, and also where I had, you know, really particular personal experiences um, attached with them. Um, and at first it was gonna be, what can I actually get? <laughs> um, <laughs> but moving on, I was like, no, these are the things I want. So this is this is what's gonna happen. Um, and so end up, having some some odd ways of getting getting the different items but yeah I just wanted to have that that personal attachment and have them connected to particular experiences um and so that's what kind of narrowed down the actual items I chose that that get repurposed yeah I love the stories of actually how you got them for the the exhibition itself it seems like yes. a journey <laughs> yeah especially that utility pole because I was like oh man what am I going to get a utility pole I just need a piece of it though Oh, and I was like, when uh, Facebook Marketplace, there's all like, people are selling like entire utility poles, but also they're just in really random cities and places that's really hard to get to. Um, and I'm like, what am I going to do with an entire utility pole? Um, but really late in the process, I found someone who's willing to, to cut a piece off for me. So I was, I was very grateful for that. They were still in a really random city, but you know, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You can get anything on the internet. <laughs> you know, actually, <laughs> just got to search long enough. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for that wonderful insight. Um, anyone viewing, please come down during our open gallery hours and you can see these objects in person, hear the performances. It's really an amazing installation. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and re-get set up here. And we're gonna move on to the second part of today's program. Oop, and we have someone else that gets to come in. Um, Tamani is here. Yes, yeah, yeah. So for the second part of this program, we are going to have some open mic performances. And um, I'm going to hand it over to Ephraim for that. Yes. Um, and so as you see with the um, exhibit, right, poetry uh, means a lot to me. And I definitely use it to 
communicate my emotions and feelings and, and connect with other people. Um, and so I feel like it's just, you know, a great tool for expressing ourselves and finding these shared experiences that we all have. And sometimes when we're just using uh, common speech, so many things can get, can get lost in that communication. It can be really hard to have someone understand you and see where you're coming from. Um, and the beauty of creative writing is, you know, it teaches us how to manipulate language in order to better communicate people with other people. Because even though we're, you know, using the same language or different experiences or different cultures, different backgrounds creates all these barriers. And so I feel like creative writing is the tool that is used to break down these barriers. And there was definitely so many times in my life where there were perspectives I didn't understand until I heard it in a poem. Um, and so it's, it's something that's very important for me. And I'm very, very grateful for everyone uh, that is here to share poems as well and to tell their personal stories and their truths. Um, and yeah, I'm just, like I said, very, very grateful for their time and being willing to do this. And so what we are doing is raising money for Haven of Rest uh, located in Akron, Ohio. Um, uh, I like for, you know, when I'm, when I'm creating a space to, to find ways where it can, uh, there could be something, you know, active uh, along with the message that is involved and with, you know, experiences of, of poverty impacting the work that I created here. Um, I was grateful to be able to work with Akron Soul Train to be able to have something where we can give back. Um, so as you're hearing these poems, you know, we're, we're performing these poems and we're, we're giving ourselves and, and showcasing these art. Um, and we would like, you know, for people listening as they're moved to, uh, they can donate money to Haven of Rest. Um, and so there is a link that you can click uh, where you can go directly to their website. But, you know, please be moved to, to donate something and help others in need. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because we're a community and we got we to gotta give back to each other and help each other out. So, yes, I'm going to keep reminding y'all. You know what I'm saying? You mean, anything, is, anything is enough. You can keep on doing it. Uh, so I'm going to, to open with the poem. And then uh, after me, uh, the amazing quiet kid will, will join us and perform. So very excited for y'all to hear these words. I'm excited for opportunity to share and we gonna get right into it. Man. So I grew up the brand of poor. We didn't ask our parents for money. Our parents asked us. I remember counting down the days till I turned 16 because that's when I could legally make my own money. In high school, my whole check was spent before I clocked in. See, I made enough to keep the lights on in the fridge but not enough to put food in it. My first time helping with the bills, though I was seven years old. Spent summer scanning concrete for loose change to feed to my piggy bank just for my parents to hit me with a, we gonna pay you back. And how? When stable housing is in an on again, off again relationship with my family, we were staying in Deacon Lowe's van. We were staying in my uncle's broken down van until Deacon Lowe took us in, then kicked us out. Now we have an auntie's with a new job. I witnessed my cousin walk into the kitchen, devour some food without asking a single soul for permission. And that's when I realized some folk grew up eating food whenever they was hungry. But I'm older now. And freshmen are swapping childhood stories. I get to talking and that's when I notice awkward walks into the room. I'm expecting relatability and I'm served misguided sympathy. Like I'm the only one in here who's under the poverty line. So I take the same tale to an open mic. I see skin like mine and I think we about to kick it. So I realize, I realize these are the type of wallets you bring up to prove poverty culture and black culture ain't the same thing. So I try to escape their stares of pity, cover it up with the, hey, we learned how to make a way out of no way though. I may be broke, but I ain't broken. I ain't even broke through, I'm just, in between blessings right now. I try to talk about my life casually and it sounds like change rattling in a cup. I make it seem like none of it fazed me and it sounds like a lie is coiled around my mouth and I'm to blame for cold switching to a higher tax bracket. Learned all these new words and pronunciations just to sound like these new friends. Don't even wanna to relate to my childhood, but I'm so defined by the lack. I feel like I lose myself by gaining something. Like who am I when I leave this penniless past behind? I ask like I'm actually in a position to, trying to remember where I came from before going anywhere. But what is being broke if not imagining being rich? Cause truth be told, I hate all these rich people but man, what I wouldn't do to be rich, man. How am I supposed to love the past that made me if I'm constantly running away from it? I know good and well what capitalism does to its poor, but don't tell my activist friends that I'm trying to get a piece of it before we abolish it. I just never want to be broke again. So go on to ask me, 
what will it profit someone to gain the whole world and lose their soul? I don't know, but I'm dying to find the answer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we are about to get into the wonderful, wonderful, amazing guest. We're about to share some poems with you. Um, they are going to introduce themselves a little bit before they get into the poem. Um, and I might say little words about them too. But yes, Quiet Kid is a phenomenal poet, um, a dedicated person to their craft and has continued to grow and grow and grow. Um, has performed in so many different stages and places, both virtually and in person. Uh, it's coming out of Cleveland, Ohio. So I'm very excited for y'all to hear Quiet Kid who will be coming up to the virtual stage right now. So if you could uh, virtually clap it up, snap it up, show your love for Quiet Kid. So I'm Quiet Kid, I'm 19, since fourth grade I've been happily married to poetry. I'm from Pluto, but I was born in Cleveland, fortunately, unfortunately. Um, so stop trying to connotate the name Quiet Kid with mass murderers and serial killers because it makes no sense. And in fact, just stop messing with the name Quiet Kid altogether. And I know people hate when I have heavy poems, but no one listens to the Quiet Kids. They fear them. And most times I'm just minding my own business and I get funny looks for being an introvert in a room full of loud people. I just am conveniently called Quiet Kid. So yes, it's literal on the surface level, but once again, no one listens to the quiet kids. They fear them. So all they ever see is that same surface. I'm simply saying, Shh. see this poem is a gun to the heads of those who chose to use the name in vain. Your two lips and your two ears don't function the same. So I suggest you find a balance. And with that, please pull out your pencils, pens, papers, pants, Put your phones in your back pocket and take several seats. Firstly, I heard an OG once say, those who ascend to afterlife only die when the connection you have with them is gone. Quiet kid it was a girl in my kindergarten class called Kiana who nobody ever heard speak but me and she wasn't imaginary, just introverted. And it wasn't hard for her to talk, but she was a master of conserving her own energy, avoiding attention until attention rose within her brain, the shape of a tumor. And then God called her home while I called her quiet kid. So the name's not to be messed around with. I'm not gonna break my connection to my first soulmate for the sake of a good poem or crowds with less heavy hearts. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna beat myself into bits to be more digestible for everybody else. Respectfully, y'all can all choke. You're all gonna know what I represent and who I stand for. All the quiet kids who get shunned and bullied and beaten for being, we all came from quiet, as loud as it may be at times. The universe speaks in sign language. God's voice is only heard faintly when you listen close because God is a quiet kid. So stop playing with the names of God's most notorious introverted human vessels. Don't you get it? In the movie, A Quiet Place, you live if you can shut up. In the movie, Don't Breathe, you live if you can shut up. I mean, really, in any scary movie, chances are you might live if you can properly shut up. No one lives loudly for long and quiet isn't a weakness, there is strength in silence. See, quiet kid is a universal language only understood by those with all ears and eyes open and only spoken by those with indomitable souls. Telling a quiet kid to be quiet or making a quiet kid hush is giving him a power that you couldn't comprehend because, nigga, there's a heavy weight in my words, but my quiet is what happens when the earth's core freezes over, making the earth almost spiral off its axis. We should all want to learn from a quiet kid, but we should never mock the quiet kid because you're right, it is always the quiet ones. Poem number one. Your hugs felt homemade. Your smiles were heaven carved. Your energy was immaculate. 
you were astonishing and I was star stricken. I hate, I hate to admit admiration, but this feeling isn't fixation. I love you. Your boom, a blessing, a beauty so boundless that now my love knows no boundaries. You're a perfect purity, accidentally angelic. You somehow found me no matter where I hid. You knew how to hear my silence and you knew how to heal my horrid without realizing when wolf was warping was in me. So you when I panicked internally and made a blank face, those who thought they could see me, you would still see me and smile upon me. And your smiles were like telepathic signals telling me that I can find home in you. And we found the happiest versions of ourselves was in each other. Retrospective connection, reflecting lifted spirits like astral projection presenting perfection. I felt whole within your hugs. I'll be homesick till I see you again because your hugs felt homemade. Your smiles were heaven carved. You saved me for the savior that you exist as. May God protect you, beloved, till we meet again. I love you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's so interesting being virtual because I know there'll just be claps and cheers right now if we was in person. So I hope y'all doing a little clapping and cheering uh, from wherever you at, snapping your fingers or something. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Them two amazing poems. I told y'all. And I tell y'all, I'm pretty sure I told y'all. Um, and so, yes, to appreciate, appreciate this work, please click on the link or go to Haven of Rest. It is located in Akron, Ohio. Please donate some money, contribute to them. Um, They're doing amazing work helping people there. So that's why we're here. You know what I'm saying? We all getting this amazing art. And all that we ask is if y'all could make some, some contributions to Haven of Rest. So we are going to continue moving on um, the next poet that we have coming to the stage um, had the pleasure of meeting at Kent State University. I was there um, and it's, it's been a pleasure to see them take poetry on and really put, put time and energy. Once again, these are people who put time and energy into the craft um, and are continuing to grow over time. Um, and so y'all about to hear from this great poet who is uh, also involved in, in helping the poetry community at Kent State, um, being present there and, and, and helping create an environment where other people can, can grow within poetry and be able to learn how to share their truths as well. So while wherever you at, you know, do some claps, do some snaps. Please welcome to the virtual stage, Khalil Cage. Hey, that right. <laughs> <laughs> What's good, y'all? Hope everybody doing well. So yes, as Ephraim said, my name is Khalil Cage. Um, I'm also known as Just Cuz as well, just a collection of seeds. So yeah, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy for the Akron Soul Train. Very happy that Ephraim invited us out. So yeah, I'm finna get into it. I got two pieces for y'all. So this first piece is called uh, Rent's Due. <clears throat> Two days before the first of the month, seven days before the first check of the month, 21 days to the second check of the month, and by then, I'll just be able to get this month's rent in. I hesitate to call my landlord because this ain't the first time. God help me that this be the last. I've been fasting every day since last check. You call it starving. I call it watching my figure. Aloud, I stretch and deny the offers from friends to grab something to eat. Like, no, nah, I'm good. I need my six pack back before the summertime. But see, I've been saying that since October and March is almost over. Been too many days since I held the joys of a burrito in my hand. Brown rice on pinto beans, all the other delicacies Chipotle can offer me. Been surviving off handouts. Pops taught me to take the man route, but when I look at my bank account, it humbles me. Reminds me that I damn sure ain't too proud to beg. Been grinding all day, and I damn sure ain't too proud to hustle. Been grinding all day, shucking and jiving all night. My hands getting hard, but my pockets still tight. Just might say forget it. Go ahead and give me a burrito, throw some, throw some hot sauce on that joint too, because what else I'm going to do with the last $11 I got? And thank God it's getting hot. The heat bill been piling since November, been swaddled in blankets, house cold as timber. This ain't easy. 
cup of blunt with the last 10 off my check, closest thing to a vacation I'll get for the next 12 months. Back hunched, been moving boxes like I work for UPS. Seems like joy ain't ship check. Ain't found its way to my place of residence. Still got glass residue on my seats from the last time a bullet jimmied its way into my window. Black plastic bags covered now. One less view for me to look out of. A metaphor for one less opportunity I have in this world for my skin being covered in brown. I struggle with memories of childhood. On days when tears turned into my mother knowing just what to do to make me smile good. I've been blessed. Ain't got no kids yet, but I'll be damned if I let them see me like this. So sometimes I have to pause in my thoughts, allow the music to catch up to me. Let the beat of my heart sink into the beat of the tempo. I got 99 problems, but a landlord damn sure ain't one, so I call my landlord up. I tell him I'm late again. He yells as usual, threatens eviction as usual. He says he can't wait two weeks, cause just like me, he got bills due. And again, I pause, I somehow, find comfort in knowing my landlord lives check to check too. It humbles me, reminds me that I'm not the only one living like I always got something to prove, living like I always got to fill these shoes and man, ain't these joints heavy. Walking, trudging like they army boots. But if one thing is true, I'm a hustle because rents do. That's that piece. Um... Yeah, yeah, that's that piece. Um, and then I got one more too. So it's called uh, Silence. And this one, uh, let me just spit it. <laughs> Birds scatter in the middle of the field like a high school football team when they yell break. Only this time, the noise isn't the crowd cheering or the flagrant fun or the feet of young boys chopping and twisting and switching through holes trying to get the touchdown. It's a gun. And then blank silence. And this time, it isn't a ball he holds in his shoulder. It's a bullet. And this time, it isn't a white officer using another black boy for target practice. It's his brother, his homie who he used to go to Mr. Man's corner store with to get ices and hot flamers with cheese. This time, it doesn't make the national news. It actually doesn't make the news at all. As a matter of fact, there was no trial because there was no jury, because there was no persecution at all. 48 hours in the city moves as fast as vapor. The precinct barely had time to get his name on paper. His mother will never know who killed her baby. A baby will always remember who killed his dreams. His killer will always remember how a park of 49 people will empty out faster than a clip of nine bullets. It only took one, along with the smug look on the gunman's face to, to get everyone to start running. It only took five, along with the hung look on the victim's face to hear the cries of the culprit. It only took seven for two to miss and to hit the wrong target. A kid, another black boy, two birds, one stone, they'll never fly again. They'll never soar higher than the t-shirts their family members will wear in remembrance of them holding their smiles forever in time. This time, there will be no riots. There will be no corner stores or gas stations going up in flames. In fact, there will be no remembered names, no hashtags, no posters, no signs, no news articles with quoted lines about human rights. This time, there will only be this poem as, us as eulogy. Rest easy. Yep, that's all I got for y'all. I appreciate y'all time. Yep. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, so much. Um, Yes, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all are, are here getting amazing writing, the ability to bring the words to life, um, topics that we need to have conversation about. Um, everyone on here that is, that is performing was picked specifically um, for the way that they can express themselves and be able to connect with y'all. So thank you so much. Once again, Khalil, I'm gonna keep reminding y'all, we are here, we are here to raise money, to contribute to Haven of Rest, 
So once again, if you have not already, please, if you can click that link in and donate something. Um, if you just joined, we are here. We're sharing our truths. We're performing poems. Um, it's in collaboration with Akron Soul Train for an exhibit that is, that is currently up. Um, and we want to make sure that we are giving back in the ways that we can and helping others in need. So thank you so much once again, Khalil, for sharing with us. Um, so coming up to the stage next, another wonderful, wonderful poet um, who has a book that is available now, a poetry book titled Nightmare. Um, so after you hear the perform, make sure you go check that out. Um, you can also see some amazing, um, some micro and longer poems posted on their Instagram. It's N Y. E N E K O N D O E. All right, rewind that if that's a possibility. If you need to, make sure that you follow them, make sure that you um, check out their work. Um, this individual graduated from Case Western and is now at Cleveland State University. Um, they, they exist with amazing poems on the page, and also, as you're about to find out, bring them to life with their words. So please welcome now. Andrea Doe. Thank you so much, Ephraim. So I have to thank Ephraim for having me here, for him picking me to be here, as well as Akron Soul Train. Like, I'm just very proud and happy to be a part of this. This is very meaningful work for me. Um, as Ephraim said, I have my book published. You could find it on my website. And I dropped my second book um, recently, so that's available. And like Ephraim was mentioning, I'm more of a written poem, poet. So I will be reading one of my poems, changing the mood a little bit. So yes, let me start. My woman is not your woman, cause your woman was not mine. You wrote it as such when you did not make the cup, when we did not make the cup for your performance because my black wrote me unwoman, unpure, because my hair was broccoli and not noodles. I was not in the running when we black have been running on the earth's eyebrows before you were here to hold pens. You did not cast us because our skin was bark and not sand that for me hijabi and face veiled. It was tore to tell if I was woman and thus was not one when my beauty is so precious Yes, unimportant, it does not matter if you not see it. This is my woman. It is feminine and masculine. This is my woman. It subsumes and not assumes. This is my woman. It is an ocean in which the ism of woman can exist, where the waves are not blue, but purple, where we do not mistake scarves for pickle nooses, but crowns. We don't want your woman if we weren't allowed to live on its bus. And this is our theater. Please come be woman with us. Be black, be green, be purple. Just be. Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed that. That's my, that's the only poem I got, but thank y'all so much for having me here and like Ephraim said, um, you can find me online. And please donate, give up your pockets to Harvest of Rest. Thanks so much, Ephraim. And please enjoy the rest of these amazing poets. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Don't, don't say that's all I got, like you ain't just do the things. It's all we needed right there, you fulfilled <laughs> us. So yes, appreciate you, appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you um so yeah you heard it thank you for reminding them and i'll remind y'all again haven of rest there is a link available that you can click to donate to their cause um so we are bringing up the next poet we are bringing up the next poet um so this is and we're getting poets from from different places y'all so you know what i'm saying we're, we're bringing in all these different voices um come from different places in the nation and so this next poet um, is based out of Connecticut. Um, they have been performing, uh, making their moves, participating in national competitions. Um, and so you're about to hear from an individual who, who has been going up with some of the best of the best and really showcasing her work um, and speaking her truth to connect with others. So I'm very excited for y'all to hear right now from Taimani Rain, 
So please welcome her to the virtual stage. Thank you, Ephraim. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Ephraim, to Akron Soul Train, and to Havens of Rest for, you know, putting this together and giving back to the community because it's something that we need to see more every day. Um, I am uh, from Connecticut, like Ephraim said. My name is Samani Rain. Um, you can follow me if you like my poetry at Nala underscore one four three on Instagram. That's Nala like the Lion King underscore one four three. Um, I'm gonna do two pieces for you guys, and I really hope you enjoy them. If you're struggling to see God today, I advise you to pray. Breathe. Feel your heartbeat's tempo, rhythm in your bones, photosynthesis in your melanin, feet grounded, hair defying gravity, your existence is supernatural. Be grateful you exist. Made it past 19, COVID or Glock, doctor or cop, we're labeled virus and they shoot to kill. So in the event you meet God tomorrow, do a good deed. Revelations 2.5 says, remember when thou art fallen, repent and do the th first works or I will remove thy candlestick. So reflect and forgive, be your worst critic and embrace your body in holy matrimony. You are light. When seven day darkness leaves you weak, celebrate. You ate, you left bed, you opened your eyes, you were made in the image. So if you're struggling to see God today, just look in the mirror. So that was a little short and sweet piece. I call it God struggles because you know we are made in the image. So if you're struggling to see God, look in the mirror because we are gods. Um, this next piece is going to be a little bit more personal, a little bit more vulnerable and I call it flawless. <clears throat> I always get asked how my face is so clear. My melanin radiates warm undertones of sun rays. I'm all natural with an ass to match every room I enter. I'm the center of attention because I'm pretty. Pretty screwed up, pretty sick of looking in the mirror, watching my weight fluctuate with the switch of my hips. I hate being skinny, my bones, show how easily I snap. Misery loves company even when I don't. My personality is a big fake smile. Teeth stained from blunts that taught me to suppress my emotions at 15. I just wanted to feel exotic inside and out. Less like light-skinned privilege, mixed opportunity, surviving life with my appearance. My freckles deem me innocent, but no one notices each dot is a bullet point to my insecurities at 18. I rarely showed skin. My face is the only part of my body without blemishes. I have legs of a goddess parted too many times without the blessing of their creator. Temples turned tomb and all the demons projected into me couldn't exercise their screams if they wanted to. My tongue became blades. I became masochist, my wrists bled once a month. I called it menstrual, called myself mental, never patient, more like monster. Placed self-made scars between stretch marks cause tiger stripes made me feel less domesticated. The only foundation I have is Fenty war paint I apply daily. I fight for my identity as my job gentrifies my existence. Dress code, full coverage, cover up girl, come colored correct. No matter how I try to conceal my truth, this girl needs some rest and it's all over my expression. Today, a stranger called me aggressive, but I've accepted my bitter attitude because every room I enter, I'm the center of attention, objectified, perverse men unraveling my dress with naked eyes, but maybe it's my fault. I shouldn't have worn it, but I just wanted to feel good for once. When I walk away, they'll watch me. They'll ask me, baby, why are you so angry? But they don't ask the nigga who broke my heart, not the job denying my applications. I have all the qualifications, not my bills, not my nightmares, not the babies I'll never meet, not my son. I feel I'm failing, not PTSD's overprotection that I check daily if he's been molested, not triggers 
causing anxiety attack, or simply the double target, being a woman and black, feeling she'll crack whenever she's asked how is your face so clear? Because I just make my pain invisible. And those are my two pieces. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so, so very much. Um, once again, we appreciate, we appreciate these artists here um, sharing their truths, bearing their souls, and inviting us into their personal stories um, and communicating the things that's on their heart. Um, so yes, if you would like to show your appreciation for the work that, that we've been able to experience today is not tonight yet the sun's still out um today please once again to remind y'all we are we are here to raise money for the haven of rest um and so thank you once again to to akram soul train for hosting this for allowing me to be a resident artist allowing the exhibit to exist and to have this opportunity where we can you know share our truth and, and raise money to help those in need um oh my god yo i you know i'm making all the faces and, and all the, the snaps um from from the poems that we were able to hear so i'm just i'm i'm very grateful once again to everyone and this is, this has been wonderful yes that was amazing um if i could have all of the performers turn their videos back on for our conclusion so that our viewers can see you all um there, the link to Haven of Rest is in the comments on this video, um, and we'll post it a few more times for anyone that is viewing this after the live stream. Um, please, please, please donate. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank Ephraim and all of our guests for participating in this wonderful program. Once again, Out of No Way will be up in the Akron Soul Train Capsule Gallery until October 23rd. So you guys have one more week to see it in person. Um, and then you can also just view this video for that tour and for all these amazing performances. It'll be up on our Facebook page um, after the live stream is done. Okay, also in our main gallery is Woven, the Human X Nature Relationship featuring resident artists, Nicole condon Shi and Ron Shelton, which is also going to be up until October 23rd. Our gallery hours are Wednesday through Saturday from 11 to 4 p.m. So we hope you guys can make time to come see. And once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you to our participants and we will see you next time. Bye.